When people say, what do you do for a living? I say, I just sit, I sit in my backside talking to people. And that's essentially what I do. <laughs> you know, where do you want to go, mate? I want to go to so-and-so. Not a problem. Uh, there we are. 10 pounds, please. Thank you very much. Oh, 12. Thanks for the tip. And that's the job. <laughs> Hi, guys. We're super excited to be back on our series here on the Humble Penny called the How Much Today Make series. And today we've got a cracking guest for you guys. We've got Perry on the line. Hi, Perry. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Ken and Mary. Thank you very much. We're so excited to be on your show. Amazing. We're so good to have, we're so pleased to have you actually. Uh, so Perry, do you want to just start by telling people who you are and what on earth you do for a living? What do you do to make money? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, what I do now is I'm a cabbie. Um, I haven't always been a cabbie. I've had quite a varied lifetime. I spent 12 years in the forces and seven years in politics and I started a business from scratch and employed 300 people. I went bankrupt in 2000 because a customer of mine went into liquidation and owed me a huge amount of money, which was huge to me. Um, so I went six years without a bank account. I've tried. I've sang in bars or restaurants. I've been a um, I've, uh, been a car park attendant. I've sold hooky clothes from a, from stalls. <laughs> and so I've done everything to try and make money. Can I honestly, honestly? But I'm a cabbie, and um, and I've did it for three years ago. But um, three years ago, I was 57 years old, and I was working on minimum wage behind a bar. So. How much of a loser was I? You know, fifty-seven year old on minimum wage and doing bar work. It's a, that's the sort of thing a teenager does. But um, wow. you know, I've just been foolish most of my life. But hopefully, I've learned some lessons along the way. So, how did you get into being a cabby driver? Well, um, I actually got to fifty-five years old, and you know, if you've got to fifty-five, and you guys don't look like you're there yet, um, <laughs> but what happens is you, the pension companies write to you and say, "Oh, you've got this little pension when you were working with." A company, a B company, and it's worth some money. So I had a couple of these lying around the place, and I got a couple of that was pretty much within a day of each other. And it seems I had over the over the previous fifty seven years, I'd accumulated five thousand pounds. So wow. I, it wasn't something to be really proud of. And I and I thought, wow, as you said there, wow, that's not a lot. And I, I always imagined when I was in my twenties or thirties that I'd be a bit further ahead than I am now at fifty five. Okay. And um, and at the time I was working, I was working behind a bar and. You'd think that would be enough to stimulate me, but it didn't because I didn't come up with an idea for a further two years when I was 57 and I was still working behind a bar. And I don't know what I did with the five thousand pounds. I probably spent it and wasted it and whatever because I don't I don't didn't have it. Um, so at 57, I was working behind a bar and I used to do what's called the back shift. That is, you'd start at five o'clock and then work till half midnight. And I did that five nights a week. And then I realized out of desperation, if you wish. Mm. that the, the the world the universe was not going to recognize my genius and just give me the money then i really had to take what tony robbins would say i'm not a massive fan of tony robbins what he says you have to take massive action uh -huh. so out of desperation almost at age 57 i was working behind a bar and i thought well i've got the daytime to do something else mm. and now i needed a flexible enough job that i could finish what time i wanted to and start what time i wanted to so that i could go back to the pub mm. and cabin just seemed the the, the easiest and most logical way to do that. So I spoke to a few cab companies and settled on on the one. Okay. And so I started from, uh, my routine was back then at 57, I'd start at seven o'clock in the morning uh, as a cab driver and I'd work till four, then I'd go home and at five o'clock I'd, you know, I'd go home, get changed, something neat, back to the pub at five o'clock and work there till half midnight. Wow. And, I did, and I did that for about three months. Uh, and I don't know, I nearly killed myself. But I did that for about three months and realized then, of course, that there's more money in cabbing than there is minimum wage behind a bar. Uh, so I just says, look, I'm just going to stop the bar work uh, and work cabbing full time. So so then my my routine changed from, I'd start, as I do now, I start at um, five o'clock in the morning uh, and I work till about four in the afternoon as a cabbie. And I did that for seven days a week for two years. I took only Christmas Day and Boxing Day off. And I saved as wow. much money as I possibly could um, to the stage now where I'm three years into it. And now I only work six days because I have some passive income and I can breathe out a little bit because right, I'm right, a little right. further ahead than I, I was three years ago. What I find interesting about your story, Perry, is that it took desperation for you to take massive action. And I wonder how many people are watching right now are in that place where they feel like they've just been, I guess the word's not procrastinating, but kind of just leaving, you know, this idea of, you know, preparing for that future life they want, kind of just leaving it until a particular point in time. It'd be good to know from people in the comments, how many of you resonate with the Perry's journey of, you know, feeling like it's getting too late. I'd love to know, Perry, 
what does a day in the life of a taxi driver look like, a cabbie? What, what do you do from like when you kind of wake up to go to bed? Um, the, the all cabbie lives are different because it's, it's one of the benefits you could choose what time you start and finish it. We're all self-employed for the most part. Right. Um, so you're, you're your own man, if you wish. Your own woman increasingly nowadays. Um, and so my, my day starts typically, as I said, starts at five o'clock in the morning. Um, I do, I'll uh, work till about seven o'clock and, and then at seven o'clock, um, I go to pick up what's called my escort, which is a, a, in my case, a female um, person who works with me and follows me on the school run. So I have a school contract with the local authority and I pick up seven special needs uh, children. They're all gorgeous. I would happily take any one of them home with me. They're lovely guys. And then we do the school run. And um, and then from that finishes about nine o'clock and then from nine o'clock until about three o'clock when the school run starts again, we would do the reverse and we take them all home. So that gap in the middle is when is when um, I j- just work and do the usual cabbing, working from ranks or getting business from the office. Um, and I find that it's, it's important to fill that time. A lot of a lot of cabbies will do the school run and then go home for breakfast and watch TV for an hour. But, but to me, I go I go to work to work. I don't, that, that, that time is filled with work and I'm disappointed I'm not working all the time. So it's one of the reasons that cabbies have, uh, I'm not so bad myself, but have um, bad eating habits is because they, they you have to eat in the cars. And so it tends to be something they can hold in one hand and then drive with the other one. So yeah, the yeah. sandwiches and pasties and that sort of thing. Um, so I tend to take my own lunches with me as well. I take fruit, three bits of fruit, fruit in the morning and I make um, salads. I take buy a salad in the afternoon. So what the top three things or habits would you say make you a success at what you do? Hmm. I, I think, that, you know what it is? I think it's, it's. I'm, I'll tell you what they are, but they don't just apply to, to, to camping. It, it's, it applies to anything you want in life, any goal you want in life. And the first thing is you must have a goal. Now, my goal is I need for my financial, my long-term financial goals, I need to make... 200 pounds a day, take 200 pounds a day in income. So there I have a goal. Most people, most cabbies um, and most people for that don't have a goal. They kind of blunder through their their days and all their lives in some cases and just, you know, getting buffeted by the wind and the tide of life and and just seeing what life throws at them. It's it's important to have a plan as well. If you have your goal, but you don't have a plan, you haven't really got a goal. It's just a wish. And, and, And sorry to disappoint you guys, wishes don't come true. But yeah. you can make you can make the goal come true if you have a plan. So mm-hmm. if, if you wish my plan, my goal is 200 pounds a day. So my plan is I make 80 pounds from my contract, my school contract. And then I've got to fill in another 120 pounds. So I, I tried doing it from starting after the school contract and then finishing the school contract. But there wasn't enough time in there. So I have to then move the, the plan, change the plan, adapt the plan to fit the goal. So now I have to start at five o'clock in the morning in order to hit that goal. So a goal, plan, and then obsess about the plan. And really, that's the... That's the way you achieve anything in life. Do you know what I love about that? I just love the fact that you've got a number in your mind. Mm-hmm. Because numbers, don't, numbers don't like him. You, oh, you, can, yeah. kid, you can lie to yourself. You say, mm-hmm. yes, I'm going to be a success and you know, I'm going to dress well and people will respect me. You can lie to yourself all you like, but the numbers, if you look at your bank account, the numbers don't yeah. lie. They are yeah. facts. So Perry, what would you say you love about what you do as a cabbie? It, being, being my own boss and being in charge of my own destiny is, is, some, is, is the best thing because then I'm in charge. And then at the end of the day, you have to take responsibility for the outcome because there's been nobody to blame or congratulate than yourself for either not making it or making it. So so I, I, that's the bit I enjoy. And it's the, the flexibility as well. You know, we all have emergencies in our life, lifetimes and, you know, we got problems with kids no matter yeah. what your age, you still got children and they will impact your life somewhere along the line. And, and it's nice to be able to just ring the office and say, look, I've got to go. Like today, for instance, I, I finished a, a, my contract and I said, look, guys, I've got to finish. I've got an appointment in a half an hour's time and I'll be back in an hour. And that's fine. And that's the bit, that's the good bit you can, you can slot into there. So it also, yeah. if you wish, yeah. it, it, if you've got other side hustles going on, um, you can, you can fit them around the cabbing as well. So it's, it's an extremely flexible way of making money, either through a company as such as I work with, uh, an established a company, or you do it with somebody like Uber. Mm-hmm. Do you need a particular qualification or a credit, you know, some kind of exam, like the knowledge? I hear people talk about the knowledge a lot. Yeah. Do you need that to be a taxi driver or a cabbie? Great point. Um, and I, it's, I, I chose the job because it requires no qualifications or skills, which is just as well because I don't have any. Um, but you have to, you have to pass um, the, the, the DBS, the police DBS, the checking system, make sure you haven't got a, your criminal record. And in some local authorities, they stipulate there is some level of knowledge. Now, in London, you have the knowledge. 
Some local authorities who have, you go to Newcastle, here yeah, I'm from Gates, and Newcastle don't have any knowledge-based test. So anybody can rock up, make sure they ta- get the cars tested, get a DBS check, bada bada bing, the next day the taxi drivers. So what do you find to be the most challenging aspect of what you do? Mary, I'm not sure it is challenging. Oh, the traffic, of course. The traffic is the is the only major challenge in that if you're, if like me, I spent 12 years in, in the forces, so you get to learn to be somewhere on time because mm. in the forces, sometimes you're not there on time, people die. So you, you get grilled in, in, ingrained in you to make sure you're, you're punctual at all times and, and the traffic stops you from doing that. Um, and it's the only thing that stops you from doing that. And so that's the stress bit. Now, I can't imagine what it must be like driving around London for, for a, a London cabbie. Um, but, um, but I guess you just get used to it. So challenges, yeah. But if I'm honest, it is by far the least stressful job I have ever done in my life. I mean, if I could explain to someone, when people say, what do you do for a living? I say, I just sit, I sit in my backside talking to people. And that's essentially what I do. You know, where do you want to go, mate? I want to go to so-and-so. Not a problem. There we are. 10 pounds, please. Thank you very much. Oh, 12. Thanks for the tip. And that's the job. <laughs> and, and you know what it is? You get paid every half an hour. You name me another job where you get paid every half an hour or 20 minutes. Or Love you know, that. So, so when he puts cash in your hand. Do you get any difficult customers at all? Yeah, that's a good you? one. It's a great question. And, and I think that's what stops people from being cabbies mm. is the perception that everybody that gets in your, in, in your cab is drunk. Um, <laughs> and, and it's not the case. I start at five o'clock in the morning. So when I pick them up at five o'clock in the morning, they are very drunk. Oh. Um, but you know, it, it, that... The awkward customer doesn't happen very often, very, very rarely. In fact, for the three years I've been doing, I've never had a, a bad experience. Wow. And drunks up, you know, you got to put with drunks, but the, the drunks just want to go home. Yeah. Uh, that's all. That's all. You know, what the role at the club is to take us to Stone Street, and they might sleep on the way there, and they'll get up and pay. And they always tip well because they think they're millionaires when they're drunk. <laughs> so, so there's, Interesting. There's a plus side of that. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something, Perry. Do you think, I mean, just speaking the obvious here, like a lot of our audience, we have quite a mixed audience and community here on YouTube. Um, do you think that for a black person becoming a cabbie, is that is that a realistic option, i.e. in terms of like, is race a big thing if you're a taxi driver you know, if, in this, yeah, in this if country? I'm, if I'm, oh, I think race is a thing in this country. My God, you can't, you can't, I don't know how you can deny that. Let me tell you this, okay? I mean, this is right off the subject. If COVID had broke out and was contained within sub-Saharan Africa, there would not be any inoculation now. I don't think so. I, I, I could just put that out there. Um, there's no question there is, there is racism. Um, our brains are triggered to be wary and be scared of things that are different to us, which is why we don't like changing jobs because we're, you know, changing jobs means it's unfamiliar and there's a potential for danger there because I might get eaten by a Tyrannosaurus or whatever. And, and, and I think that, I think the brain sees somebody who's different to us and the automatic thing the brain does, it's different to us, it's a potential danger. Now you'd think after all this time that we might have overridden that and said, no, no, it's not data. They're, they're just, the skin's a different color, but they're exactly the same as us. Uh-huh. But there, there, there are still people that, that will take that attitude. And we have lots of uh, African guys who work for us um, um, with strong African accents, um, Nigeria. We've got lots of um, Eastern Europeans that work for right. us. Mm-hmm. And, it's a, and it's a great way for them to make extra money, you know. Um, maybe, the, maybe because of some inbuilt racism in some people in some companies that they can't find a job. And Cabin's a great way to do it. It's a great equalizer, Cabin. Uh, honestly, it gen- it genuinely, is it? We're all the same, um, and it's it's the only the only good, bad thing about it. I would say you talked Mary about challenges before. It's it can be lonely in as much it's a yeah. it's it, you're by yourself. You're not part of a team. It's a very much an individual yeah. sport, if you wish, um, in that you rely on yourself. Um, but if you know if you're happy with that, that's fine. But but I would I would recommend um, any person of color to, to to get involved, and it's a great way of making money. Yeah. It's funny you say that on the point about loneliness, a lot of people who are entrepreneur, entrepreneurs can actually relate to that because this journey of entrepreneurship is actually quite a lonely journey unless you've got other people who are of on the same journey with you and you mm. talk to them periodically and you share notes and ideas. Unless that, it actually can be quite a lonely thing. So oh, by the way, I should mention Perry runs his own YouTube channel, Stupid is the Norm. I believe it's the name of it. So guys, head over there, check out the channel. I'm gonna put links to it below. Head over, subscribe, support Perry, because he does great work. Brings us to the question about money. We'd love to know, given like, you know, the big challenge you had, you know, in your mid fifties and that epiphany that the universe is not gonna just hand you what you want. You need to take massive action. Tell us how much money do you make per month? 
and from what sources now, given like what you've been doing so far? Made 38,000 from taxing um, this year. Um, I now, I've bought my second property. So I started my little project, which when I was 57, I'm 60 next week. So I'm th almost three years into it. Um, so I make about 2,000 um, income wise after tax, about 2,000 a month from taxiing. Mm -hmm. um, I save 900 pounds a month from that to reinvest. It took me two years to save my first 20,000 pounds. And when I, when I save my 20,000 pounds over two years, I bought a property. And that was my first property. It was in a place in Teesside. Lovely, okay. and it was a lovely three, two, two bedroom house, two bedroom house, just bought a three bedroom one. Two bedroom house, um, it rent for 63,000. Are you guys in London reading and weep? A lovely two bedroom semi for 63,000 pounds. Wow. Um, so I bought that and, that and that rents for 525 a month. So okay. that makes me after the mortgage and some management fees, about 380 pounds a month. Um, I bought another one in September last year. That was a three bed mid terraced house for coincidentally the same amount of money, 63,000. Mm -hmm. And that rents for 500 pounds a month. So uh, currently I'm getting um, almost 800 pounds a month from property. Um, I'm saving uh, from 900 pounds a month from my, my income from the taxi and company. Mm -hmm. We've just started a franchise, my business partner and I, um, we put, um, we put three, four, 5,000 each into that. And it's our first month. And we took seven and a half thousand pounds of sales in the first month. And I'll tell you what it is before you ask the question. We just put up tents. It's a marquee. It's called the, the party tent company, Newcastle. Wow. Um, and okay. we put up tents in people's back gardens. And because and the, the beauty of, in the Northeast is the weather so rubbish. And if you plan to have a party, you need a tent because it, you can 50% chance it's going to rain. <laughs> so, uh, so we did seven and a half thousand sales in our first month. Um, and the month isn't over yet. So wow. we've been delighted with that. So we're, we're taking a thousand pounds a month. So let's recap. I take a thousand pounds a month out of the franchise. I save 900 pounds a month from my taxiing and currently uh, 800 pounds a month I make from, from my properties. Uh, I'm buying this month, probably next month now, um, another property, property. So that'll be in three years, I'll have gone from minimum wage to saving 2000 pounds a month. No, three thousand pounds. We need to unpack that. Three thousand pounds. Like month. my goal. My goal is over, over the next seven years that I'll I'll get to twenty properties. That's, that's so, 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 hang on, hang on. Over the next seven years, your goal is to get what? Twenty properties. Three by next one, so I need to get another seventeen. Yeah, I'll tell you how it works. What I've worked out <laughs> is that by the by the time next year comes, um, I'll have bought five properties. Five properties. Um, probably make, will, will net me round about two thousand pounds a month. So at that stage of with after four years from starting a minimum wage, I can retire on full salary because I make two thousand pounds a month from Cavian. My properties in a year's time will make me two thousand pounds a month. I could at that stage give up work and retire on full pay. But um, but there's something beautiful happens. I've done I've crunched the numbers and something beautiful happens at the, pro at the eighth property. When you get to eight properties and your the income's about th just a little over three thousand pounds a month, uh -huh. three thousand pounds a month from those properties generate enough income to buy two properties a year from those alone which means from the ninth property onwards i can keep all the cash now what i'll do then is of course i'll max out my ISAs, my stocks and shares ISAs, so two of twenty thousand pounds into them so I, I did a presentation to my family because i was getting a bit of stick for not contributing enough to the household bills mm -hmm. and i thought the family weren't on board it's one of the it's one of the videos i've done my youtube channel so i did i've got a board and i said look at you might remember might forget where i was three years ago here's where i am now and yeah. here's where we'll get to. And, and I, 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 I crunched the numbers and I said, look, here's what it's going to look like in seven years time. Wow. I'll, have 20, I'll have 20 properties. I'll have £600,000 in equity. I'll have £200,000 in, in a stocks and shares ISA. And I'll have £200,000 in cash. Coincidentally, there's the iconic million pounds. Cool million. And, and the, one of the reasons I did the videos was because prior to the goal mm -hmm. and the plan, you have to believe that the goal is possible. Yeah. And if you don't believe, you know, a lot of the financial advisors, we use the 4% rule where you where they say in order to retire using stocks and shares or a pension, you need to save 25 times your salary. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in London, I know what the average salary is in London, 40,000. So, you know, you, you've got to save 25 times 40,000 to, to retire on full pay. I mean, I would just look at that number. So that's impossible. And, and that and that, people, that, yeah. that perspective of impossibility will just say people just go, well, What's yeah. the point in trying? Yeah. I just have to rely on benefits. But I, but, yeah. I, but I, I think, so what it, one of the reasons I said for doing the video was 
I can say, look, I, I can make a million pounds in 10 years. No qualifications, no skills, just hard work doing a job that anybody can do. And you have to invest the money. And that's the key. It's the invest the money. OK, Perry, so you're clearly not relying on just your salary from being a cab driver. But what is the maximum income potential for somebody who wants to be a, a cab driver? If I'm honest, I'm probably there already. I, I, I said earlier that I've just done my tax return and I did £38,000. I could, I suppose, work on a Sunday as well and maybe squeeze out another 5000 Um, But w something happened when I got to my second property is that I was able to sigh a little breath of relief and realize that I could just step back a little bit and say that, okay, we've done all that hard work. Um, you put that two years, three years of grinding, you know, without patting yourself on the back, you can afford to take a day off. There's a ceiling to the amount of time you work, but there's no ceiling to the, to the amount of money you can make in that time. That's just the, all the allocating of money. Right. What top three pieces of advice would you give somebody who wants to, get to where you are in life today. They want to maybe, you know, drive a taxi and make money from it, but also diversify their income by maybe investing in property and so on. Research myself and I went to um, the Times 100 rich list, mm -hmm. not one rich list, which lists the, the, most, uh, the richest people in the UK, mm -hmm. the top 100. And I went through everyone, it's, it's, on, it's online, you can do it. And you look through how they made their money from number one, right the way at the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, You'd think that a lot of them made it because a lot of them were toffs and had a gentry. They would inherit it. There were only two people on the 100 that inherited it. The rest of them only, only did it in three ways. One was a uh, stock exchange. Yeah. The other one was uh, property. And the other one was business. Yeah. And they're the only three ways you can do it. Yeah. So, yeah. so, if, you, so if, if, you, if, you, if you think, well, I need a plan and I don't have a plan, what's my plan? You need to think about which one of those three ways you're going to do it. If you're not a natural entrepreneur, and, and most people aren't, so that leaves you two things. So now it's simpler because you've got a choice of two, or you can do both, okay. and that is stocks and shares, and, and the other one is property. And, and again, if you don't know, you can get some advice on that. And stocks and shares could be as little as maxing out your pension. You, if, you, if you want to go, if, if you, all you want to be is a millionaire, you can go and work, work at McDonald's from age 18 to 67 and save two hours your weekly wage into an ISA, stocks and shares ISA. You'll be a millionaire when you retire. If, that's, if, that, if you want to take 50 or 60 years to do it, that's the way to do it. But you don't have to do it that way. You can, you can do it faster by utilizing those three ways. Okay. Well, that segues us into nicely into the next question, which is, what is your current relationship with money? Very close. <laughs> I give you a word. Me and money are tight, really are tight. Money is, 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 is it's, it's not real, okay? It's, it's, it's an illusion. Uh, when you put money in the bank, you ten pounds in the bank. The bank will lend ten pounds out to three different people, and yet when you check your bank account, it still says ten pounds. But so it's an illusion. They just manufacture money. Money is just a means of providing what it is you want. It's a very, it's a very noble pursuit. You know, people look down on people who are wealthy, but if you're wealthy, you can do an awful lot of good, as you two guys know, because yeah. I watch your videos, do a lot for the church. Yeah. Now, if you had no money, you would not be in a position to do that. Yeah. So the, be the best way you can help a poor person is not to be poor yourself, but to get rich and then help the poor people you know, do you have that heart to, to do more, you know, beyond just yourself? So that point you made there is a, re it's a really, really powerful yeah. one. I'd love to know, Perry, so you work extremely hard, you know, um, you're clearly someone who laziness is not in your vocabulary at all. Um, what do you do beyond making money? What do you, what do you spend money on to kind of treat yourself even? I, I was in, I was interviewed by the Guardian one time, and the, the, the lady says, uh, "She's the lady reporter says, so what do you spend money on?" I said, "Don't spend money." She says, "Come on, you must spend something." I says, "I don't." She says, well, "I works at the time. I was working seven days a week." I says, "Don't get a chance to spend money." She says, "What do you? What? But what if you need a new pair of shoes?" I says, "Why would you need a new pair of shoes?" She says, "Well, you just, just need a new pair. Of, you just need a new pair of shoes." Sometimes I says, "Well, no, I don't. I got my work shoes and." work seven days a week, so I'm in a uniform. I said, so, what? And she just didn't get it at all. I said, well, don't spend money. And, um, it's, and I don't go on holiday because I'm, I've got a big holiday planned in seven years' time. Um, and again, that's, that's, that's me being selfish, but my wife my, and the daughter's going on holiday, but I stay at home and work because well, my excuse is I have to look after the cats, but really I don't want to dislodge myself from my, from my journey. I can hear people already going, what if you don't make it in seven years, right? Because that's, that's, that's a very... Yeah genuine argument someone might say well actually what if like something happens and like do you not regret not yeah yeah i, I know that and, and I, I get that all the time um yeah so the, the argument is yeah but you could be dead tomorrow 
And my, my counter to that is, uh, yeah, I could be dead tomorrow, but it's, it's unlikely. I mean, the reality, I mean, there are those really sad, tragic individuals who have a life shortening disease and they die young. I mean, I, 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 fortunately, I haven't been able to cope with that. Anybody close to me have all died very old. And that's the point I make. The reality is, yes, you, yes, you could die very young, mm-hmm. but the reality is you're going to live into your 80s. And massive, the odds are, odds are you're going to live into your 80s and you have to be prepared. Yeah. Book a small holiday, even if it's a small one. You know, a weekend away, <laughs> book a holiday. A staycation. Do a, a staycation. staycation. Do come it. to come to, actually don't come to London. You spend <laughs> you're not spending all your money. <laughs> so can you think of a specific money mistake or regret growing up? And what have you learned from it? It is is what I, is this thing I'm buying right now, this car, this new set of clothes, is it making me wealthier or is it making me poorer? Assuming you are assuming you want to be wealthy, of course. And then now I ask, ask that question every time. So is this shirt, can I buy it from Next or should I go to Primark and get it? Because I need a shirt, but it doesn't have to be from Next or, or Marks and Spencer, whatever you design, um, Zara, whatever you want to buy it from. And the other thing is, is what I'm doing now the best use of my time? And you should ask yourself that all the time. Whilst you're watching Love Island or whatever you're busy doing, is this the best use of my time, given the fact that I want to be insert go? And um, they're, they're the, the piece of advice. Don't... If you want to be wealthy, don't con- concentrate on being wealthy, not looking wealthy. And that, I did that for years, years. But I've driven BMWs, um, flash clothes, spent fortunes on clothes. Oh, wow. Basically, you've, you've come from basically making the worst possible mistakes with your money and realizing later on in your life that, you know, you don't have much time on your side. And you're now doing quite radical things to make that change and, and seeing results, which we find to be so inspiring, by the way, Perry, oh, you know, major. massively. Because a lot of people in their 50s, a lot of people in their 50s actually feel like it's like the end. they're giving up, they're winding yeah. down. But mm-hmm. to us, it sounds like you are actually... Getting started. You're getting started with your yeah. plans. And my, and my, my only regret is I, sh- I could have done this 20 years ago. If I had done this yeah. 20 years ago, I'd yeah. have been a multi-millionaire by now. Yeah, but you can't, yeah. you can't put, you can't put an old head and young shoulders, and that's, and if you wish, that's what you and I are trying to, do, you guys here and me are trying to do, trying to put an older head on young shoulders. Here, yeah. don't be like me. I'm not a good role model. I might be a good role model now, but for forty years I was a complete waster, and yeah, that's not what you want to do. We hear you. What would you say, Perry, is your ultimate financial goal? I know you've probably told us in different ways, yeah. but if you could do it in one sentence, what would you say that is? To have enough money to reduce unnecessary suffering in, wow in, in in whatever form that takes maybe that's it's a family form maybe look at bill gates bill gates set up the gates foundation and he's eradicating polio and malaria you know malaria has killed more malaria has killed half the people in the world half the people that ever exist in the world were, were killed by malaria and that's how big it is and he's, he's spending his fortune doing that and if you can do that and you don't have to do that on as, on as big a stage as him but if you can reduce unnecessary suffering amongst other people, then that's a good use of your money. Wow. Perry, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so pleased you've been able to drop so you drop so many bombs on this on this one. So so much wisdom oh, yes. on this particular episode. We're really, really appreciative. We're gonna just mention to people, head over, check out Perry's channel, Stupid is the Norm. We're going to put links to that below and on the screen for you guys. Head over there. Make sure you're heading over to the right channel. Support him. Check out some of his content as well. That's and nice. learn so much more from his valuable experiences in life so far and everything else he's still doing to try and build wealth. Guys, we'll put links also below to other episodes. We've interviewed all kinds of people, mm-hmm. you know, investment bankers, YouTubers, surgeons, surgeons pro gamers, basically people from various backgrounds, engineers more recently. Mm-hmm. We're going to put links to those below for you guys to check out as well. But thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. Thank you, guys. And as ever, in all things, be be thankful thankful and and seek joy. joy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Perry. That was Cheers, Perry. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Bye. 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 Bye.